Number 36, letter A. Calculate the angular momentum of the Earth in its orbit around the Sun. All right, so in terms of uh, understanding the picture of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, here's the Sun, here's the Earth. And if we had to think about now finding the angular momentum of such a, a scenario, uh, we would first it would first behoove us to try to identify a formula for angular momentum. So it's over here on the right hand side. Angular momentum is going to be classified with the variable L. All right. So for letter A, we have L is equal to the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular velocity. So in order for obviously in order for me to calculate the angular momentum, I got to know these two objects. Okay. So first, let's deal with the um, moment of inertia of the system. So you have to think about, uh, in turn, basically you have to consider the nature of this system, okay? You have the Earth rotating around an axis, okay? Now the Earth rotating about its axis um, in terms of the shape of the moment of inertia, meaning the picture that you wanna think about on, on, your, on the page of your textbook 359, is going to be probably the hoop around a cylinder axis, right? The Earth is basically a point mass out here, and it's rotating about the axis. So that's most easily approximated uh, with this particular picture. So I know now that to find this, it's going to be the mass of the object that's rotating multiplied by the radius between the axis of rotation and that object squared, okay? So basically, it's the mass of the Earth mul uh, multiplied by the radius of the orbit of Earth squared. Okay, that's going to take care of the moment of inertia. Then that will then be multiplied by the angular velocity. So you do know the angular velocity of the Earth, just not maybe in radians per second, right? You probably know it in maybe revolutions per year. Right? We know that the Earth makes one revolution, and I'll write it on the bottom, one revolution in one year. So what I need to do is convert this value into radians per second. That's easy. This is just conversions, right? So two pi radians for every one revolution. Revolutions go bye-bye. So year, we can go to uh, days if you want, right? Year to day, so every, uh, for every year there's 365 days. You could do 365.25, that's fine. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, I mean, it will make a difference, just not significantly. Then we can go maybe from day to hour, okay? So in one day, there's 24 hours. And then we can go from hour to second. One hour is 3,600 seconds. And voila. So let's see what we get. So we get 2 pi. Now divided by 365 times 24 times 3,600. And we get about 2. I'm just going to round here, okay? This is, uh, yeah, I'll leave it 1.99 times 10 to the negative 7. And this will be now in terms of radians per second. This is your omega value, okay? So that is the value for omega here. So I'm just gonna leave that omega. And now I'm gonna plug in all the values, okay? The mass of the Earth is 5.979, as I detailed over here, times 10 to the 24th kilograms, multiplied by the radius of Earth's orbit, which is 1.5 times 10 to the 11th. And then multiplied now by the, uh, by the way, that's squared, okay? This whole thing is squared. And then multiplied by the angular velocity of 1.99 times 10 to the minus seven. And let's see what we come up with. So L is now equal to, so that answer times 1.5 times 10 to the 11th, that'll be squared, times in 5.979 times 10 to the 24th. And what do we get? We get a value of approximately 2.68 times 10 to the 40. You could have two sig figs there, whatever, since I use two here. Whatever, doesn't matter. All right, so uh, that takes care of letter A. All right, let's do letter B. I'm going to get rid of this conversion to give myself a little more space. And now let's take a look at uh, letter, letter B. So it says, compare this angular momentum with the angular momentum of Earth on its axis. So now for letter B, we have to calculate the angular momentum of Earth on its own axis. So now you have to think about uh, the picture changes now, right, for the moment of inertia. The formula stays the same. It's still L is equal to I omega. But now the nature of the Earth spinning about its axis would be best approximated by this picture, okay? Uh, and the moment of inertia for a solid sphere spinning about any particular diameter is gonna be equal to two mR squared over five, all right? So now let's do this. So L will now be equal to 
2 times the mass of the Earth multiplied now by the radius of the Earth. Not the orbit anymore, but the radius of the Earth itself squared all over 5. Then multiplied again by our angular velocity. You also know the angular velocity, might just not realize it. Right? How long does it take Earth to make one rotation or one revolution about its own axis? 24 hours, right? So we could say that one revolution takes 24 hours. So now all I got to do is convert from hours to minutes and minutes to seconds. Or you could just go right from hours to seconds. That's fine. So for every one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. And we realize that this is just going to be uh, 1 divided by 24 times 3,600. So it comes out to be about 1 point, yeah, I'm just going to write the exact value here, but it's 1.157 times 10 to the minus 5. So this is just 20, this is just going to be 24 times 3600. And that's now in revolution, excuse me, radians. And I made a mistake, right? I'm going back and checking my units. That's what happens when you work too quickly. Okay, so the hour is canceled, but now I'm in revolutions per second. That's why it's always important to work with the units. Eh, I was just testing you to see if you were paying attention. So now we got to go from revolutions to radians. And finally, we've got 2 pi for every 1. So now we're good. Now we got it in radians per second. All right. So again, the exact value is just simply going to be uh, 2 pi all over 24 times 3600. You could reduce that if you like. I'm going to just be lazy and leave it alone. So now I'm just going to plug it on into my formula down here, all the information. So now it's going to be 2 multiplied by the mass of the Earth, which that is the same as before, uh, 5.979 times 10 to the 24th. That's going to be multiplied by the radius of the Earth squared. So that changes now. Here's the radius of the Earth. It's approximately 6.376 times 10 to the 6th. And that thing is squared. Divide this whole part by 5. Multiply that now by your... Um, angular velocity of 2 pi all over 30, excuse me, 24 times 3600. And we're going to get our answer. All right, so let's just plug it on into the calculator. So here uh, we got 2 times 5.979 times 10 to the 24th times 6.376 times 10 to the 6th, and that's squared. You can divide that by 5 if you want at that point. Then multiply by 2 pi all divided by... 24 times 3,600, and we get a value of about 7.07, .07, right? 7.07 .07 times 10 to the 33rd, okay? So that takes care of that, right? And, well, hopefully the mailman's still alive, um, or it might be the EPS driver, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, they love coming to my house. So uh, I actually didn't even talk about the the uh, the units here for angular uh, momentum, but you can you know you can easily find them by just actually I'll leave that up to you guys. What are the units of angular momentum? Knowing the particular units found within um, the uh, the formula of moment of inertia and angular velocity. I'll right, leave that up to you. And now just as a little challenge. And then, um, so this is the value that we found of the angular momentum of Earth. And then it said just to compare it, right, to the angular momentum of the Earth around the sun. So all you have to do is a division now, right? It's just a simple ratio. Take this value. I'll put it in red. Take this value. So it's going to be 2.68 times 10 to the 40th. Divide it then by 7.07 .07 times 10 to the 33rd. And you'll find out how many times larger. The angular momentum is uh, of the Earth around the Sun than the Earth on its own axis. So 2.68 times 10 to the 40th is going to be rounded slightly, but that's good enough. So this is approximately 3.79 or so times 10 to the 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. All right, so there won't be any units for this, though, because this is just telling you how many times larger the angular momentum is for the Earth around the Sun than the Earth on its own axis. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, give us a hand, hit the like button too, and I'll see you in the next problem. Take care.